welcome to the Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. I'm still on Bali and I do have today a beautiful guest, a very special guest. I would call her even a friend for Meso because we have been knowing each other for the last couple of months already. Yeah. And uh, about whom am I talking? About Ima. Ima is from Sumba, but Ima is not the only name you're carrying. What is your full name, Ima? So my full name's Ima Atika Rambumai. Isn't it too long? <laughs> no, it's not too long. It's beautiful because mine is as well very long. It's Kobina oh, really? Falkenberg, see? Oh, it's just wow. It's different, but it doesn't have so much meaning as your name. What is your name about? Okay, so actually my last two names uh, here. Let me explain. Uh, I have the Rambu word, which is actually, it's really famous in Sumba. Um, it's a beautiful, sweet name for all women of Sumba. So whoever in Sumba for women, you call, call them Rambu, so everybody will understand and it's so polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I have the another one, the last one, it's May. It's my family name. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a name from my grandmother, the, the mother of my father. So mm -hmm. we uh, usually in Sumba pick name from whether your grandmother or your grandfather, you can take name and then it's continuing. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's my family name, <laughs> my grandmother name that I take. And then about Ima, the first name, uh, my father actually uh, prepared it already long before I was born. So yeah, Ima in Indonesian, you have Iman. It's Indonesian word, which is faithful. The meaning of iman it's faithful but most likely to be the boy's name so then uh my father just cut the end and then okay now because you are a girl your name is ima so here i'm ima <laughs> what a quite, quite a long story so sorry <laughs> no need to apologize really we have all the time we want yeah kind of i'm taking so much time <laughs> no 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 and okay. i'm very very happy i have to say because ima is for me very special she's a friend from sumba so you might ask now Sumba? Yeah. Where, what is where Sumba? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, where is it? Because even myself, I didn't know it. I've been to Bali so many times and oh. I didn't know about Sumba. So this island, I have to say because I went there and I so loved it. I think I spent one of my best, best time times in my life there. Mm -hmm. And it was also thanks to you and your friends that yes. I could meet on the island of Sumba. I know. So how far away is Sumba from Bali? It just takes actually one hour. Uh, I've experienced when I used the Nam Air. Uh, wing, I mean Nam Air Airlines. It's just one hour, but sometimes one hour and a half. Uh, half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. by so airline. it's it's actually it's really very very close by. Absolute right. Yeah. But nobody knows about that island. For me, it's kind of a hidden secret in Indonesia. Yeah. It's an island that I think is very very similar to the island of Bali. It's just like how it was 25 years ago. I've been to Bali the first time like actually almost 25 years ago. Wow. And it reminded me so much of what Bali, oh, Bali used vibes, to be, right? Yeah. Yes. And when I arrived there, it was like when I when I end, when I when I exited the plane, it was you could feel that on that island is space, right? Because right. tourism is not yet so much developed. I mean, Bali is really full. It's yeah. packed. It's That's full. the difference. Yes. So it's really like natural, traditional, like untouched. Mm. No traffic. Still like, I mean, really quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, no Beautiful. traffic. It's true because. You, you until now you barely have any of any streets there, right? Like, like the the streets that you would compare with the standard of Bali. Like there That's was, I can remember one major street, and this is leading to one of the most expensive hotels in the world. Yeah. Because funny enough, or interesting enough, I would yeah. rather say, it's on Zumba. What is the name of this palace there? The palace? Yeah, this famous hotel. You know, the five star. Plus. Oh, that one, Nihiwatu Resort. You know, it's uh, it's ex. Uh, have been getting the the like reward. It's the best hotel in 2016. Two years, 2016 and 2017. So the best hotel of the world. Yeah, you can find it on the magazine of leisure and travel. I, <laughs> I yeah, I didn't know about it. I have to say, and I didn't stay there. Unfortunately, I was just in and spent Check it the on evening there. Instagram. You have to <laughs> find it. Really, it has the best surfing ever. I guess. Yeah, I think you're yeah, very the proud of this really hotel. Good. The waves is really good. 
But one has also to say, like, back to the fact, Sumba is a very, very poor island. So yeah, it's, this is, for me, it was like a way of, wow, there is this luxury hotel, and then around there are people still living in places where there is no running water, where there is no electricity. And I went to an area in Sumba where people are actually having even problems of finding and getting something to eat. That's so right. it's, for me, an island full of contrast. It's full of beauty. Yeah. I really fell in love with the locals, I have yeah. to say. Mm, and I can see that tourism is now developing there. And there yeah. we come to you, Ima, because mm, I met you in a, in a magazine. I went to go some yoga clothes shopping. Yeah. And there you were. And we started a conversation. And I asked, so where are you from, Ima? And you said, Zumba. And it's Zumba. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's Zumba. And I wanted to know about your life story. And you told me why it is that you are here in Bali. Because it's not hard to say common for a young woman in Sumba to finally get the opportunity to travel here in Bali. I've right? And I time. think it was a real journey for you. It was a fight yeah. with the yeah. dad against traditions <laughs> to open up minds. Yes. So first to the facts, who trained you? Why are you so current in English? Who, by whom did you got your education? Like the so, training, the hospitality so training? Yes. I got the school. The name is Sumba Hospitality Foundation. I graduated from my senior high school and then went there. So from there, I like I got my big wings to just fly, and then now it's like over overwhelming. You know, mm -hmm. my life changed a lot. Like for example, now I can speak English. So that's because of I'm studying there. I was studying there. Uh, just for your information, actually, mostly in Sumba, when you get the education, we don't really take it for seriously, especially for English. This is one example. Like English, mm -hmm. it, it's another uh, language. Like, uh, what's the purpose? Mm -hmm. People don't really see what's the 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 uh, advantages. So, so the opportunity to the speak opportunity. currently English because it helps you. It helps you to find yeah, a job here yeah, in yeah, Bali, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, so so that's. What mm. I'm, I'm being proud of because now I can uh, show it up to the people around there. When I went back last couple of months, I can uh, give them some information like about the school. How can I turn to be like this uh, girl who who is now working in Bali and then can speak English. That's why I get a better job and then I get a better life. I can help my parents because I get the job. So mm. it it started from the Sumba Hospitality Foundation. It's a tourism school, the first one in Sumba where many friends of mine get the same chances as well mm -hmm. and then yeah uh mm -hmm. it started there and then we fly we we got here to bali and then get better job when i was on the island of sumba i visited the school myself and it's really fascinating mm -hmm. it's like the scholars are so happy being there they are around 15 16 17 years old and they normally have like a very uh, a very classical background for Sumba. Like I think your parents are rice farmers, that's right? That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. My father was just, uh, I mean, rice farmers. And I wouldn't say just because I, I have been with rice farmers, and I have to say it's so much work you cannot imagine. It's really hard labor. Actually, but I think I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for. Uh, yeah, actually, but but maybe because that's a habit in Sumba, like. Oh, you're just a rice farmers, and then yeah. So it's now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, uh, when you, you have that job, have that situation. It means like, we don't have a really better, mm. better life. Uh, That's so you're what not I mean. so much respected because of what you are doing, and yeah. rice farmers seem to be like. Yeah, sometimes you know we got the the problem with. So many things struggling when mm -hmm. you didn't really get much as well. So that's why. Dependence yeah, and so the school the is too. offering really occasions for kids coming with those backgrounds to offer them yeah, opportunities. It's hard to get even for the rice itself. Mm -hmm. That I, that's why I was saying like my father was just a farmer, like because it's quite hard when you get the rice as well. It depends on the season, so so much work. Yeah, we have a really like underprivileged background. <laughs> You said I'm a privileged background. So this is how you would call it, even yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been on the rice field when you were younger? Were you obliged to a work lot. there? 
a lot <laughs> really a lot like because that's the way how you support your family that's how what mm. else can we do if we're not helping each other so that's why even but uh you know maybe because we are used to it even a smaller kid uh, than me right now they can play in the in the rice field and then helping like yeah but it's wonderful because we're doing it in a happy way like yeah we did you when you were how old That's were you when you started to prison. work a bit to help your parents i mean i come from a countryside as well mm, so around okay. us were a lot of farmers so i know when you grow up on a countryside in, in a farm household you are everywhere like you can help and you are there and you live yeah. with the animals, with the nature. Yeah, right? that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, which is beautiful, right? Yeah, Even yeah, your body is different, right? That's right. I agree with that so, so much. So, but what when you look back in your in your childhood, do you remember at what point it became to you like being like a real labor, like real work? Where your dad said, "Look, Ima, there is this box and there is this plant, and now you need to do A, B, C, D," and where you could feel, "Wow, now it's not playful anymore. Now it's like." my parents need me to work there how old were you do you have any memory like rough. when you realized it's not fun it's not a game you have to work to support your parents mm. since when i was in uh junior high school i guess senior high school yeah mm -hmm. in the beginning of senior high school yeah uh it's not uh playful things anymore as you said so that's why i started to open my mind like uh oh this is not how it's supposed mm -hmm. to be to get uh um next step to get the next step in life yeah yeah that's what i mean mm -hmm. so that's why once i got the information about the school so it turns me to be like open-minded oh actually i have i can uh let me go in so yeah. you had a point in your life where you realized if i continue like this yeah I will stay there where I am, but this is not what I want. That's the thing. That's the thing because it's really common in Zumba. You just help mm -hmm. your parents and then uh, no out of the box of things that you can do. So then after getting graduated from the senior high school, even sometimes... How uh, old were you there when you realized that? Um, 13, 14? Older? I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, around mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, junior high school, it was like, um, um, I was 15. And was there anything like, have you been connected to the internet and you have seen fancy build pictures about the New York fashion show? Or have you seen like yeah. Paris so lifestyle? Vision. Or have you get uh, to read a book where you thought, oh, there is much more in life. This village where I was growing up, it's, I love it because I know that you are very, very close to your family. Um, but there is more out in this life. So do you remember, was there anything, maybe a tourist stopping by and saying something or I, what happened? It, it was uh, in my junior high school on my third grade, I think. Yeah. So um, it makes me, it makes me inspired, of course, like uh, I'm willing that one day I have to fight and then get out of here, like where I'm now, where I was in that time like in my comfort zone mm -hmm. comfort zone you said comfort yeah. zone. may i go back just quickly have you been have you had access to the internet could you did you have had a smartphone at the time yes in my junior high school already so, so you i could got see. my facebook already ah. in that time so you could see also through the yeah. internet yeah. through that perspective the other part of the world and have your parents a television set yeah we do have we do have that's why it, mm. it keeps me like okay keeps me thinking i have to like ah, mm. get out get out of this island maybe to see around the world like for the real but now if i imagine i would be your dad or your mom yeah sure they are very proud of you they love you they want to keep absolutely. you absolutely yeah maybe they prefer to have this Ima should get married and then she's going to maybe marry the next the neighbor and then she's next to us and we can all support each other and then there was this young woman Ima and Ima said suddenly dad I want to go to hospitality school when I am 15 16 yeah that's what happened so what was your dad saying so my dad saying like I'm worried because you're getting to the new 
experience like new life you are not used to another kind of life so you have to be here in our uh, in our circle so then yeah my father was afraid of anything they just, maybe me, my father thought that i i'm not that kind that mm -hmm. kind of girl who is ready for the world the world like like that kind of that thing mm -hmm. so was he in favor did mm -hmm. he support you from the beginning to go to hospitality school that was no support stuff any any uh, at all i mean so then I, I mean, did he say, why? Eva, I don't want you that you go because new ideas, new culture, you might leave Zumba because you, when you are better educated, you have yeah. more opportunities as much as I love it, but I want you to be here. So did he say clearly no or did he just went into mute and not, not speaking or did he say, uh, do whatever you want to do? What did he say? My father was like, don't go there to the hospital in the school because he knows already in that time that actually that school uh, like founded built by the foreigners so my ah. yeah that's the thing because mm -hmm. ah so this was one reason he knew that the school was not a local school yeah but it were foreigners who were building up the school yeah and the teacher as well they're foreigners so my father was being afraid of me w maybe because he thought that i would be like changed maybe or you know how old are you right now i'm now 22 years old if just you turned yesterday oh. uh, last february really last yeah. february happy yeah. birthday Delayed. yes thank you <laughs> so my question would be Ima, if you would have stayed in Sumba, imagine you would yeah. not have gone to that school yeah. for higher education you would have stayed with your family the rice farmers what would have happened is it normal to get married and if so at what age it was it's really normal there so mm -hmm. there's a lot of experiences that I see my at my like my neighborhoods around at this age even lower than my age like 17 or 15 so they're marrying at the age of uh, yeah, 17 or 15 yeah 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 that's mm -hmm. really right so that's the problem that i lucky me because of you you know i got a chance already in that time when i was that teenager i got the information like i saw already actually this habit isn't good so then if I now I'm challenging you I'm going in there okay <laughs> you said like if I would have stayed on Sumba mm -hmm. most probably I would have been married because now I'm 23 and I'm not married so and you said this habit challenging question why is it so bad to get married to settle down and have a mm. local nice life because you are in the green you have your old family around you you know what you know what you don't know but now you are like a bird, you left the nest and now you are in Bali and you are on your own. So why would you say, or why was it for you that you didn't want to get married? I mean, you have seen the marriage of your parents, you've seen the marriage of your neighbors. At the same time, you have got into influence of the internet and some other images. Yeah, so two worlds. What was speaking for you against the classical marriage role of a woman in Sumba? so you why is it bad is it's not good for my point of view in that time even from until now i still like ban the earlier ma uh, marriage even the, the this one habit as well which is kawin tangkap it means kayo kawin tangkap Ka kawin the language is beautiful kawin actually is marriage and then mm -hmm. tangkap is like you you uh, it's not like what is tangka? Uh, like you caught you caught something. So it happens like this: when a man pick the woman, force uh, forcefully, mm -hmm. and then just take her anywhere, you see, and then uh, get him home, get her home, like that. So is that's it like a, a kidnapping. Yeah, <laughs> that's the word. Mm -hmm. Kidnapping. Yeah, even there is like. That, that habit and then it's still common Can in I just, there because this is something maybe some listeners will not think they listen correctly what kidnapping of women and 
can I? Would you mind? I try to explain. You interrupt me when yeah, I'm wrong, sure. right? Because, yeah, sure. Sure. Um, this is a very I know you read what I, I what I say already. So it's a very very special habit where women cannot choose with whom they get married. It's up to the men, and that's the thing. It's only up to the men and. The women, oh, it's not, look what happens, I can't even talk about it. It's scary. It's very scary. And so at a young age, women are kidnapped, literally really kidnapped. They don't know when it happened and it is accepted by their families, by their friends and by society. And then after the kidnapping, she has to marry the man yeah. who kidnapped her. Yeah. And uh, very often the women are under 18, right? And it means at the end, right. I mean... <laughs> I come from a society where we claim to have love marriage. Not everything is golden mm. in the Western, neither, right? And also for us, marriage is still an important thing and part of our society. But kidnapping is something I doubt we have this in Europe. Um, it's a very, very crucial practice, I think. That's my personal view right now. Yeah. And I've spoken to women to whom it has happened. And um, yeah. It's so terrible. <laughs> and the uh, most um, scary thing, once the man kidnapped the girl, the parents sometimes can still just agree mm. without the improvement from the girl. So as long as the parents in these two sides and then that man agree, so it can be happened. Do you have friends to whom it happened? Like I have that, I have. And then I have a friend who was actually um, knew already the clue like they was gonna uh, took her like was gonna take her kidnap her and then she ran here to Bali. Oh, she left somebody yeah. because of that. Yeah, and now she's here like <laughs> should be escaping from the world of kidnapping. If you try kidnapping to escape married. from that situation, is mm -hmm. it something that family and friends understand? Or is it what I might assume? It's such a tradition. It's it's an ongoing tradition, right? Yeah. And you tradition think if something already. is a tradition, it's true. Yeah. We have this inner belief, like, oh, wow, this is this is this is then the rule true because this is how things has to, has to go have mm -hmm. to go. So what when your friend escaped and yeah. your friend did not get married? How was it for for the family? For the family, like, did they understand? No, at all. That was a really uh, pressure for my friend because kidnap uh, I mean escaping already but uh, like her her parents like being mad then mm -hmm. being mad because it's kind of for them it's kind of not polite for the parents you just mm -hmm. left yeah mm -hmm. that's the thing that's one of the thing and then another mm -hmm. things that make me absolutely don't agree about the marriage there mm -hmm. like earlier marriage uh, because uh, once you get married, not going to college anymore, or maybe finding another better life, like better job, just do the normal life. Um, having many kids in Sumba, we mostly have a lot what of kids. Many kids. In Sumba, it's kind of rare to have two kids only. Like uh, here happens that two kids is enough. But in Sumba, you know, sometimes you can get 12 kids in one. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. So you just have kids and then doing the rice field and then that's, that's it. No more. So you think there is some perspective missing? I mean, now you can compare because yeah. you are here on this also sometimes very crazy island of Bali, right? And mm, I you can are, see that. Yeah, you are 23. and. I think it's also not easy for you. I mean, you are here in Uruguatu and you get to know all those really sometimes very fancy, but really yeah. also sometimes big insane. different. It's very different to Sumba. I mean, here is um, for me, this expat community is a heaven of non-conformity, non-rules yeah. and totally self-expression. So how is it for you? Because I doubt there can be any contracts bigger. You know, Contra, yeah. like those people that you get to know here. I mean, here are millionaires around, and here are like backpackers who just live from one day yeah, to the other. Yeah, many bullies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bullies. What is the foreigner? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Do I need to feel not discriminated because you called me bully? Uh, you know, <laughs> I I yes. most probably yes. I <laughs> I've ever heard 
heard that bule is kind of negative. Yes, I heard as well. It's very negative. But from our perspective, from our from the local people yeah. as well as me too, we call bule like they are foreigner. So yeah. what is a bule about? It's positive what from is, us. What is uh, you? Can, can, is it possible for you to distinguish between a Chinese bule and a Taiwanese bule, or a German bule and a French bule? It's difficult, right? For you, it's you we know what call I mean? like, all foreigners bule actually. You know, all the same. Yeah, even they are ah. even from Europe, America, or Africa. So just and bule. what are the prejudices against uh, the bullies? What is your assumption for a bule? Are they okay. all like rich even when they come with the backpack? Yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Especially in Sumba, where once you see Bule, you're gonna be so excited. And then, picture please, picture please. <laughs> and oh, they all yeah, ask so me whether cool. I are you staying with what was the name of the five star hotel? We make a big episode. Whether I stay in Niuatu. They all ask me. It was so funny. Even in the little, most little villages yeah. where there were like huts, no running water, but they assumed I would stay there. And I have to say, this is a crazy place because you normally you come with a private helicopter. And what are the most famous guests? Because you were there as well. You got David, David Beckham. So this who else? Kind of fleet so mind. many, so many. Like because uh, actually, mostly they are um, what is, what do we call the private guests? Like you have, uh, you don't have to tell tell the yes. people around because yes. they are really VVVIP people. Yes, I, yeah. I was there as well and I spoke to the we chef of the security company some. he told me like nobody knows who's there yeah. actually. We know some but, but actually mo most people, most mm -hmm. VVVIP people come already like celebrities, uh, this, 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 but we don't really know. Mm -hmm. And I think also because of this uh, private Private hotel there, it's also kind of mismatched to reality because I can only understand if I would live in Sumbar, mm -hmm. I would also say like, of course, everyone who is wi white or different, who's not Indonesian or not from Sumbar, yeah. most probably he is rich and he's staying in this hotel, of course. Yeah, that's the perspective, like Bule is three, to so uh, much money, uh, that's the thing. Question, if you, because you, you, you do the hospitality school, you got access to the five star hotel, you were in there, right? Yeah. So what is your personal view? Because a lot of people, as I just said, they came with a helicopter and they come with a helicopter. They don't understand anything of the local cult culture. Actually, maybe they don't even care so much because they are there for vacation, right? So yeah. hmm. I go there I and I have all the luxury you can imagine next to a beautiful ocean beachside. How is it for you? Do you wish sometimes? And I say this because when I was on Zumba, there is not much industry. There is not much with which you can do um, business. It's everything is now on the tourism side. Like there's a lot of pressure and expectation, and the only major street I could use my motor bicycle on was the one that was leading from the airport to the Luato Hotel. Yeah. This is the only road that is working. So um, and it's it's very very basic there. I mean, yeah, it's the only street where you could see also like people living next to. If not like. There is still people living in the jungle, like in the in, in the, the jungle. Yeah, use the horse, not the bike. Yes. <laughs> um, so again, for me, one of the best, best, best travels ever made, and I learned so much. I got so modest and devoted. It was amazing. Um, but getting back to my point, like, what is what do you think people come in? Do you think it's a bit oh, one can even say ignorant because they don't want to? How to what extent do they connect with the locals? You know. Because they come, they leave money, and I could see at the five star hotel, around the five star hotel, there is no wealth. Because, of course, I don't know, a couple of hundred people are working for that five star hotel. So each one who is in is nourishing the family back home. Yeah. So it's a good thing financially, right? That's a really good thing. But what's your question? What's your vision? What would you view being the best, best tourist person? How would you describe the best tourist person? that comes to your beloved island, what should he do, what shouldn't he do? Is there anything that comes to your mind, Hima? I have a lot. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, once you come, not only for spending the time like me time, and then mm -hmm. uh, just spending so much money to, I mean, to get the benefit for your own self. So, I, I expect for the tourists, like doing the response, I mean, being, uh, as sustainable, I mean, what, um, eco-friendly things that you have to do, like keep 
the local yeah, area point. to be clean, no trash. I hope that because actually once you get so many people come in, I'm afraid of the trash too, like everywhere because it's still a lack of awareness in Sumba to keep the area clean, mm -hmm. like the environment, I mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hope to, and then, yeah, mm -hmm. to be, to be a really, um, I don't know what to say that. So maybe to get connected to the locals and then mm -hmm. bringing, like what you did, you know? I, I know that so well that when you went there, you, came to the local village and then see what happens so bring so much positivity like connecting with them learn their culture and then to be tolerant mm. that's the thing yeah. so i think also this is actually i have a lot but i couldn't yeah, yeah, explain no. it no no think about maybe you get another point because um my greatest gift on Sumba was of course the nature and the local culture you can see here a lot of fabrics in my room. That's the thing as well. Oh my god. We have a lot of like uh, products. How we make, you know, we have a really, uh, actually it's quite famous. The ikats, it's uh, made by material, natural, really, really natural material. Sometimes it takes so long time to get that fabric. So I guess it could be super nice for you for you guys who can yeah, yeah 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 that's the thing so the greatest gift for me was to con to get in touch to have this human connection with the locals yeah because and to see their yeah. beauty and what you say is it, ah yeah it was like you, you said something before about the english language skills and i have never been to a place where people were so curious in learning english i had people i could i was not one minute on my own not one minute i was at the beach suddenly out of the blue out of the jungle they were i was surrounded by people and they all wanted to train their english skills yeah yeah yes. and i because as i told you before mm -hmm. once we see bole like hi we're really bole, again, yeah, this word. excited you know excited and then we want to speak mm -hmm. but now how could we speak if yeah. we don't have the language yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing as well yeah. And you mentioned sustainability, I agree because we all know that Bali is like sinking away, there's so much rubbish around mm -hmm. and I, I, think. I just, I, I can't imagine because like usually until we use like plastic and plastic per se is not bad because plastic is also like if you use it carefully, mm. yeah, it is, there is a good purpose in it, but um, usually you had like banana leaves, right, to wrap things in. Yeah? yeah and a banana leaf what do you do with a banana leaf once you have eaten what was inside the banana leaves yeah what we usually we can make nasi bungkus you know like oh, wrap, you know, wrap the rice with, with the the food yeah. wrap the food yes food. and when you have eaten the food you just throw it away right and it, it's no problem but you can do the same with plastic yeah and so of course there's also you have to think about it because for decades you were using like natural material to wrap things in and now it's impossible yeah. for the food Ima, I would like to zoom away from this beautiful island of Sumba because now I'm also starting to dream and oh, it was so good yeah, you have to visit all districts yeah, like in East Sumba, West Sumba it's large, it's larger than Bali, you know, the island of Sumba yeah. actually it's larger than Bali but it's like no crowded <laughs> life of time like so so traditional yeah. and touch <laughs> i can highly recommend it too so yeah. soon you're away from sumba back to you ima yes um i said before like with the police with the foreigners it's like new energy weird ideas you get new perspectives i mean it, one can say it's like an ongoing live tv show because everybody who comes in your in your, in your shop or you're working in brings their own life story and it's like a various it's it's a bundle of different people and personalities here yeah. so how do you do it you mentioned before your dad was afraid you would lose your tr connection to sumba your tradition mm -hmm. now you are here and you are ah, exposed to so much influence from foreigners yes how do you balance that ah uh, yes um i have so many experiences to be adaptive <laughs> uh, can I tell you the, you can tell the, everything the you funny want. story uh, how different it is and then I have to be adaptive we have the it's policy I can say it policy uh, in my community 
it's not good when you wear the hot pants, you know. Once we go <laughs> okay, what to I'm be sexy, today. we have to be uh, covering, uh, covered up, yeah. Mm -hmm. But once I got to that school, when I met so many bullets, bullets. our yeah, our eyes kind of what? like, oh my god, what's this? We are not doing that thing, but just seeing the other people to be like that, like being sexy, using bikinis, it's shocking for us. Like, oh no, it's not good for the family. Like back in our family, if they uh, knew us, were like connecting with these people, surrounding by, by these kind of people, it's not good. It's not our culture. So it's funny, you know, and then. And then from that school, because I met bullies, bullies as well, so I got to be used by their lifestyle. And then came to Bali. It's not really shocking because I got to know. Uh, before I came here, I I imagined it already, like by the internet and then the people around. So then here, then even now in Bali, I can be like bullies too, going to the beach by using this, this, this taxi. So so you using. Well, yeah, why not? why not? Why <laughs> not? It's yeah, it's not negative actually. So my open my mind is open already, like okay. So it opens up when it comes to being nude and That's also becomes sexy, right? Yes. Because like before we started the interview, you were like, Is my hair okay? We don't need to have more lipstick. So mm -hmm. you're playing with that as well. So yeah. tell me, do you know? I mean there is a lot of taboo on death and also on sexuality throughout the world. Yeah. So do you know why when it comes to, because being, showing part of your body, mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't speak about that before, but <laughs> I'm also like a yeah, typical bully here today, like yeah. um, wearing nothing on my shoulders. Yeah. Do you know why it is viewed as such a taboo? Why is it taboo. viewed to not be so much exposing your skin? Do you know the reason behind in your culture? In my culture, because uh, of the religion as well, and then because of the what religion do you have? Christian, but mm -hmm. we still do have to still be like polite in the community, and then as well because it's kind of flirting as they thought sexuality. Yeah, sexuality. So it it means that when once you use that one, it means you are like yes, what is what are you then? Um, like you are making all the guys come to you and then rape me, rape me, kind of that. So Maybe you say flirting. Like, yeah, yeah even kind of raping is even a bit more like you inviting men. <laughs> yeah, inviting men, kind of like that. So mm -hmm. you inviting the rape. That's what I mean. So, is it in your culture like? Is it like when you are not wearing so many clothes and then you are raped? It's your fault because you are like teasing men is this something that you have in zumba yeah, largely yeah precise? it's it's a it's potential like we we've ever experienced raping as well happens there mm -hmm. yeah so uh so it's i think the old i mean i learned like even when i'm in when i was in brazil or other parts of the world it's very often the case that you are either a good woman yeah they are then traditionally very boring and they behave you know what i mean they are covered and yeah, everything yeah and if you don't fulfill the stereotype, you are a bad woman. You must be... Still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that. That's why now, okay, as long as I know, really know myself, I'm a good girl. Even when I'm using kind of those things, that the stereotype that we talk about. The so, bikini. I'm, yeah, I'm still just Does your dad fine. know that you're wearing a bikini? Um, not... No. <laughs> I, you know, I adjust like once I get back to my hometown, I'm being like, okay, this is uh, the community, and then just being adopted. You adopt. adopt. You adopt. Being adopted. So you will not wear your bikini in no, front of your dad? No, for sure, for sure. Can I ask? Otherwise, my dad will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Yeah, for sure. So, but you have an Instagram profile. Does yes. your dad know what you are showing on Instagram? My dad don't have. <laughs> my dad doesn't have Instagram, you know? Facebook as well. So. <laughs> Only WhatsApp. Sometimes my dad uh, saw my my posts like being sexy, but I guess he's like being understandable already because I told him what happened here. Mm -hmm. I told her how it is, and then my dad really know uh, knows well 
how these uh, beautiful daughters actually inside and out so my dad trust in me now he trusts yeah me. because i saw them already like i'm being this 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 but i have a lot of positivity back to my family like and i think you are also doing a very good job because you are supporting your parents financially that's right? the thing yeah yeah that's why uh, now it's easier for me to to get trust from my dad yeah. whatever i'm doing he trusts me already because you are now a large supporter of the family the whole family so. sure i'm working here not only for myself i have yeah. to send money I for us how my much family. just to imagine yeah like, how much is the percentage i don't want to have the amount but would hmm. you say like half of my salary goes back to sumbar it's a 20 percent and i put uh, for my savings 10 percent yeah what what do you do with your financials sometimes when they really need that even uh 50 of my yeah i can give that mm -hmm. just for free like i mean whenever they need even it's really much when uh i mean as long as i have it i can just give it as long as i'm here living eating and then still can go outside i'm not a partying girl and like spending much money i i always remember back there i have my family to support that's beautiful yeah <laughs> You said, I think when we spoke um, the first time, that you are also putting money besides because you want to have also, you want to go for another educational program, right? Now I'm in my college, so my goal is like um, reached already. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in college already. That was a goal before. I mm -hmm. saved money for this, for this, for this, manage. So that's why I said in the beginning that I'm an independent girl. Mm -hmm. I I'm just being proud because I would never believe if I think back then I was just a little simple girl and then like no hope, no dreams, but here I'm here. <laughs> here I am Ina, now. How if my, if someone is listening here? Yeah. Um how did you do this? What do you think was your quality that distinguished you from others? Why are you there where you are? Because I summarize, you were coming from financially very, very challenging background. Yeah. Your parents were rice farmers. You were yeah. growing up on an island that is really, I would rather say, still remote and underdeveloped. You are now 23. It was already seven years ago when you started. Your... 30, uh, 22. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm mixed it up. Yeah. I'm sorry. But it's for close. me, it's so young still. Yeah. So it, you went to the school years ago. So at that time, Sumba was not yet as developed as it is today so what was it that within you there was the seed of first i don't want to stay where i am i'm aware that where i am there is no perspective as much as i love my family my culture my background but i want to go on in life and then also to have the possibility and the cleverness yeah to see what are my options yes there is a school i want to go there it's a school where you have to apply i think there are 150 people applying something like this oh yeah the, the right? school the yes so school, yeah, yeah. Really, it's really very selective so you have really to fight for it yeah then you had the obstacle of your dad saying and i think he was not talking to you for a couple of days right when you mentioned that yeah, wish yeah right? yeah when you said dad i love you <laughs> but this is not my life i want to go out to the yes. world so when you summarize it was like a you you can be so 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 proud right but I mean, there are millions of other women, young girls, that when they are listening to that right now, another imas. They ask, yes, no, yeah, another wow, <laughs> another imas. So, what is your recommendation to them? What what quality do you have, or what what skill, or what traits that where they say, where you would say this is important? What what was it that that you are here where you are? So you mean. Um, like was it like the inner power, the inner fire? Was it determination? What would you say? What, what was, would I say? What, if you look at yourself now, with all what you have succeeded in life, I, okay, what it. was? What were the key points? The key points is just catch your dreams. Don't be like stuck in the comfort zone. So just get out of uh, your old habits like i mean look outside like learning try to be to be uh, passionate about learning new things mm -hmm. so that's the thing so once you you see what happened outside of the your your old world so you can see the new world and then ah this is it and then it it it's not uh, uh 
impossible for for everyone who have a big dream like me it's it's experience already it happens already like i i'm here right now it's because i pass it already so then just just follow your dreams and then keep learning that's the thing and then i guess mm -hmm. um, you love your family you love your community and your culture but still you have to learn another things as well so just to be adaptive like me i'm adaptive hmm. uh, like it's a very good yeah. quality that you speak right being adaptive like yeah. what you said before you go home i go home i do what and then my culture are, is like yeah i'm being sumbanese i'm ima in sumba but here in bali as long as you're you're still uh i mean doing positive things why not like you mm -hmm. enjoy your life mm -hmm. not just just uh staying Oh, I mean, not in progress. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's not exciting. Yeah, we are all work in progress, right? We are all like each person of us is work in progress. Yeah. And I like what I learned as well is you are never your past. Like what you were yesterday, you are not today. Yeah, right? never stop learning. Never mm -hmm. stop learning <laughs> because yeah, what I imagine if I, I, I mean, I'm in, I'm still in Sumba, like mm -hmm. uh, same with the other uh, most people there maybe you just born there and then die there no mm -hmm. going anywhere like you just born eat married that is that is uh, i mean that's it and then die there because actually traveling like seeing another culture it's hap it's a happy thing that's but that's what i'm feeling so that's why yeah. once i got back to sumba i told them you have to keep learning new things and then and then get a better life yeah i'm sure you're mm. a great inspiration <laughs> also for the girls and women there yeah how is it like i picture myself now being one of those women that got kidnapped mm -hmm. and then i learn about ima went out into the world so when you get back to your old village can you feel some negative vibes as well? Because I come also from a small village and I left it. Okay. Different story and long time not as oh, hard really? as yours. But I can feel that there are different vibes um, for those who left. And I was wondering, does it uh, happen does no it matter where yeah. you were born, right? Yeah. So my question to you is, um, when you come back, even if you say you adopt, you're different because your language, your yeah. vision, your pictures, your mind, your thoughts is different. Yeah. yeah. Your energy is a different one. Yeah. So do you only get like approval and confirmation and wow, Ima, this is great what you did. I want that my daughter is doing the same. Or is it more yeah. also frightening? Actually, mostly it's positive mm -hmm. because, because my father, uh, my parents, being really proud of me because they know me well so then they like spread the positive Aww. things to my community yeah i really uh, oh my god it's it's really a happy thing when i get back and then they take me as an example in my community even there's still a little things like maybe because of some uh jealousy maybe mm, that's this 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 sometimes still like gossiping no actually uh, still wondering what are you working there like what is your job there and then this 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 but mostly it's a positive thing yeah but still we still do have negative vibes which is uh, even when you explain them this is tourism industry where I work they still kind of um, are you working there as a maid in in a like I mean in a house like still mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they didn't know about tourism. Mm -hmm. They they put a level which is when you work in a hotel, it means you are like a house helper, like a maid, which mm -hmm. means which means, th which means housemaid that they mean is kind of in in like you have the boss and then you are being like, uh, hey, you do this, you do this, like being. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I hope you understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then still as well, um, are you like, um, uh, they don't know sugar daddy by the way, but they, they mean kind of things like that, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of, um, so negative, like when they see bule, it, it's a, bule is rich and this, 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 and when you work with bule, so maybe they can pay you and then this, 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 you can do this, this, it's so negative, 
they can still think like that because yeah right now it's change it changed already in sumba uh, uh, it's developed a little bit more television more internet more phones in my surroundings so sometimes when they see the negative vibes that i talked to you before uh it 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 i mean it they put on their mind that it is true which is actually they don't see the other side like yeah still <laughs> thank you i, I have would have you understand what i mean <laughs> i think yes okay yes absolutely i would have um three more questions to you sure okay. <laughs> um i believe that empowerment means also being financially independent yeah yeah i, I would say you will agree because yeah you now you're earning your own money which is not normal from where you're coming from yeah and it gives you independency and also the possibility to support your family back home so um what when you save some money what do you save it for you say right now it's for an education if you go a bit on the long term what mm. would be one thing where you say this is really something <laughs> that i would like to save money for so i have uh, like sections mm -hmm. the saving is for my colleague the saving is for my parents the saving is for my own future so i picture myself in the future i can save money right now i can work and then even if I don't have a man who who support me. I mean, I can live by my own with or without a man. So I have my own goals. Like I don't have to wait the man because in Sumba, the man will support you. Mm -hmm. uh, be, that's why as well, uh, what we talk about, like women in Sumba, they kind of just waiting because the man will pay for you. They they take you. It still happens in Germany mm -hmm. as well, by the way so you're mm -hmm. waiting and then you yeah. will have your husband mm -hmm. in the future it's not me right now mm -hmm. so i'm planning to have my my own goals even i can buy i mean i wanna have my own house my own cars my blah 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 so once maybe i get a man or i get my my partner i mean he can just uh come to me and then yeah we can share the life but if so it's you, still not coming i can still fight i'm fighting still until yeah i mean all my dreams come true <laughs> that's my goal so i save for my future as well yeah that's very good <laughs> imagine you once are going to have a daughter what would be okay <laughs> yeah maybe you're still a bit uh, still too, too early yeah. to imagine but <laughs> Maybe you can picture a mm -hmm. new vision, I think you can mm -hmm. do. What would be one thing you want her really to understand from the world? Where you say, if I would have known this earlier, my life would have been easier. I had to go a rough way to make to get that understanding and knowledge. So yeah. if there is one thing, one key thing you could pass to your daughter earlier than you learned it in your life, yeah. what would it be? Think globally, mm -hmm. I guess yeah because once you think globally you can so many things that you mm -hmm. know you learn you see mm -hmm. that uh, so i guess mm -hmm. that one and then um what else okay uh <laughs> that's it for right now because actually for imagining uh, to have a family it's still not on no, this my... would have been my third question so oh. you now with so many different cultural backgrounds okay. yeah and contact to the police and what would be your vision of a perfect man for you right do you wow, do you, wow yes <laughs> the, the big one comes at the end what cool yeah what should he be like should he be this more traditional Sumba man should he no, be like a crazy for sure <laughs> Actually, before I was kind of, oh, I don't want Sumba man actually. <laughs> because maybe because mostly I know how, how they how is their mindset, like how is their habit, the culture, actually. But uh, I realized actually it's not good. It depends on the people itself. It, it depends on the person itself, not about his humanist or his this, this, Very but wise words. Yeah, but I've ever uh like have this thought that no 
I guess I don't wanna uh, marry a sumo man, you know. But now I'm like more open minded. It depends on the person. So my future husband could be. <laughs> I I wish I could have the the one who have the really open minded mm -hmm. same as me. I guess the first the man version of me <laughs> the ah. the man version of the me. man version of you so yeah you marry so your own who version is, who is hard worker and then mm -hmm. and then love the family still i mean even we are here far away from the family but we still love the family support them so because that's, that's so the, the family the, origin the mm. value of the family and the community yeah, that's is very a important priority as well priority, priority. that is said like hard working so you mean like I, I hear you are very ambitious, very modern, empowered woman. So I assume you would like to see the same in your partner. Yeah. yeah so that he knows what you can create yeah. in life. Yeah. And saving. And yeah. then, I mean, not just to work and then get and get get your own revenue. I mean, own profit. Uh, make money by yourself. And then you just uh, consume and then uh, buy, pay and then for your own it's not good for me like you have to be a giving person as well mm -hmm. because i'm so you mean yeah. like earning money just for your own purpose to sit on it yeah. that's not the meaning of money yeah because you said like you're even sometimes when it's not good your with your family, family or your neighbors you give, like a lot of money back home right mm. so to give money to give money away again to circleize money yeah mm. money and then happiness like <laughs> happiness. yeah happiness we can share the love with our family and then when you know i can imagine that uh, it's so beautiful <laughs> and then uh who still keep up the dream i mean the vision and then and then yeah keep learning i like also the open mindness you yeah. said like open mind as you are who you can, can take me not take me who can be i mean a good partner to travel around the world and then you still yeah. remember to back to your village and then say your positive things in your community even actually i would like to have my own foundation in my own community where i can teach english for the local kids yeah, to give back something mm, right yeah that's right because i'm right here now as what ima is be, uh, i mean ima now actually should be um concerning the another emas you know um i you mean like inspire, i got this inspire other yeah, women, that's what you mean. i got this opportunity and then i'm being like this because i got the opportunity the opportunity so why and i think one thing you're why doing not you give the is other, already you what know? you're doing right now because you can encourage so many other you said it before ah, emas, like through your life story so i'm really very right. very thankful i'm thankful too because your help then but i'm thinking what my life is can be shared right <laughs> oh no but you see you have a lot to share mm. ima before we say goodbye here um okay do you have any local song you can sing or poem or anything where you can that you feel like you want to share Oh my god, about local song? Yes, a local song. Because we do have here uh, Ima's friend. Ima is not on uh, her own. Do you want to come over to the camera and both of you sing a local song? How do you feel? Uh, actually, she doesn't speak Sumbanese. Ah. She's Sabunese but staying in Sumba. Interesting. Okay. Different language. Different you know? language. <laughs> oh, then you have to do yeah. it on your own. Oh. I don't remember. I didn't prepare her. I don't remember all the lyrics like in a, it's it means mama uh it makes me like remember my village uh my my mom my dad or like oh. <laughs> oh my god in a, in a, mama mama it kind of the uh and then the other one um ama 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 yame uh and then do you want me to copy you oh my yes, god please. <laughs> yes ya mama bega ata ina amata kada ma e taki wano maro wano ma mono ina amama i hope this is not messed up otherwise the somebody will love at me <laughs> love it uh, <laughs> i'm somebody's okay <laughs> beautiful so yeah beautiful i 
I have to thank you for the time we could spend together. It was like going on a journey with you, I'm not only to Sumba, well. but like learning so much from a very brave young woman. And I can just say, like the French would say, yeah. chapeau. And you should really spread your story to encourage other women, starting from financial independency yeah. towards where to find the balance between local and um, international lifestyle and That's much right. more. That's right. Ima, from the bottom of my heart. I'm thank thankful you. too. I'm so happy that I can share my story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So it's also thank you days. for being here on today's show for the Human Project, um, your podcast for inspiring stories. I do not know what I mentioned, I think once, I'm Corina Rosa and uh, you can find all the information about you, like your Instagram sure. account uh, yeah. in the show notes. And um, what else to say? Like. What else to say? I would say thank you for the patience to hear a lot of my stories. <laughs> <laughs> Too long. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, okay. I mean, sometimes I can kind of get off or get out of the topic like too much information. No, no sir. Yes. It was perfect. I hope you is. enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. We both hope you enjoyed our journey here, and I'm sure I'm very positive you could take away a lot. Yeah. Leave me a review, um, write down uh, in the comments on Instagram what you could take away from today's episode and I'm looking forward for our next journey and I do wish you now a beautiful day. Keep on shining. Yours, Karina Rosa. Mm -hmm.